Hi, welcome to Take 101. I'm Lucian Morgan and on today's show it's all about story and screenplay for your film. Today's guest is top Hollywood director and producer screenwriter Mark Ezra, responsible for wonderful successes like Waking Ned, Steel starring Stephen Dorff and Savage Heart starring Richard Harris. Now let's see what Mark Ezra has for us today. How did you get into the film industry, Mark? Well, I was at film school and uh, while I was there I was editing other people's films and doing a pretty good job. You know, everyone wanted me to do the, the edit. So naturally I went straight out of film school and got a job in a cutting room. Of course, uh, it was pretty tough in those days uh, to go straight in at the top. So uh, the way it worked is they... Uh, they gave me a job uh, basically sweeping up the cutting room floor. But um, after, uh, after a couple of weeks, uh, on the first film, the uh, editor got fired and his assistant sort of took over and then they realised he was better at finding where trims were than uh, actually editing. So I got, got promoted and uh, it went on like that. I got, got a lot of films I was editing. These were pretty bad movies though. They were sort of what we used to call in the 70s Euro puddings that you'd have a, a sort of German actor, an Italian, a French guy, a Spanish guy and their accents were terrible and you could never understand what was going on. And um, every film the same thing happened. There'd be a young guy would walk in, he'd be very smartly dressed and he'd have a Porsche parked outside and he said, you've ruined my vision. Who is this guy? It was a different guy each time, but they all were sort of the same kind of person. And it was always the writer. And of course, I realised at that point that I was at the wrong end of the business, that the you know, editor and then the composer get paid last. And if the money runs out, you don't get paid. Whereas the writer gets paid first, and they can't make the movie unless you've been paid. So that's how it works. So I moved into writing. Now listen up! Anyone move, anyone sneeze, and this young lady here is going to get her brain splattered all over her station. Goodbye, sweetie. Mm. The downtown bank this afternoon and escaped with over $300,000 in cash. They're dangerous. I want them. It's all the same to you. I like to catch them myself. It's 50 grand each. That's our stake money for the next job. How about a little bit more action next time? Slim 7 8. Do you want something? 20 million dollars in bearer bonds. Get any resistance. Any. You don't put yourselves at risk. Mark, how do you get a film financed? Well, every film is different. Unlike, uh, I was just talking to someone this morning about that. Uh, you know, if I had a shoe factory, I've been making a hundred different models of shoe, possibly. So when you want to finance a new model, it's not that, it's only sort of 1% of what you're doing. When you do a movie, every movie is so different from the last one. You know, unless you're making a, a sequel, of course, which is why uh, Hollywood loves doing this, because they know they've got a built-in audience. Now, I can think of many different ways I've got films financed, but I mean, the best way, obviously, is to find a way to do it yourself, either with friends or crowdfunding or family. Or, you know, you can make a film for very little money nowadays digitally. You can edit it at home. So I would probably, you know, for someone starting out, I'd try and do it that way, because at least you have control. But do make sure that somebody wants to buy it at the end. Try and find a buyer before you make the film. That's mm. the biggest piece of advice. At the other extreme, I go through you know, 
my contacts and see if you know if I've met people or know people who've made a lot of money recently. That's another good way of doing it. If you've got someone who's suddenly got a massive tax bill, they can offset some of that. You can structure it quite legitimately uh, through an EIS scheme so that they can invest in your movie and they get 20% back a year over three years and it works out so they've, you know, that 60% of their investment is already covered. If you know that you've got 50% covered from another source with a distributor, suddenly they're not out of pocket. In 63 countries around the world, dozens of lottery machines spin hundreds of lottery balls. It takes seconds for the losers to realize they've lost. But for the winners, it is an event which will undoubtedly change their lives forever. Has the news reached any more? Nobody knows but the winner. Ned Devine. Is there a greater twist of fate winning and the next minute die from the shock of it? Hello, National Lotto. Now, I wonder to talk to someone about a claim that I've been making. If the Lotto man comes to the village, you say that Ned Devine is alive and well. And you point your finger to Michael O'Sullivan. Ned wants us to share the winnings. Do you think you can outsmart the man from the city? Would you happen to know a Ned Devine? I do. Well, I can take you to Ned Devine's house if you want. A right turn coming up here. Will you drive a little slower, mister? Are you having trouble with the directions? I am. You're going too fast, yes. Uh, yes? Michael's in with the man from the lotto. He's never told a lie in his life. Well, he's making up for it now, so? Big win, is it? Six million. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! <laughs> 894,620 pounds. How does that make you feel? Fox Searchlight Pictures presents... I'll just have to come back to the village and make some inquiries. I'd like to make sure that you are Ned Devine. <laughs> a comedy that will make you feel... like a winner. To Ned Devine. To Ned. Waking Ned Devine. This fall, odds are you'll get lucky. Welcome to Benelex Media, your TV and film production company. We produce TV programs such as Take 101 and Show for Africa. We produce such films as Forget the Pact and Phantom of Fury. Are you looking to produce documentaries, adverts, trailers, jingles, promos, Benelex Media will take care of your production line. Contact Benelex Media on 0207 998 0930. That's 0207 998 0930. Or we can be viewed on the website at www.benelexmedia.com. You can email us at studio at benelexmedia.com. And bear in mind, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube on Benelux Media. What's the difference between a story and a screenplay? Well, in its simplest level, I mean, a, well, a screenplay has to have a story, but a story can be just uh, an outline of an idea, you know, with a beginning, a middle, and an end. A screenplay has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end, not necessarily in that order, but it's uh, it's got to run for you know something like. 105 pages with every page representing one minute of screen time. Mm -hmm. Intra you might notice sometimes uh, this used to puzzle me when I was young. You'd watch the credits of a movie and it's a story by Lucien Morgan, screenplay by Mark Ezra. And I said, well, how come this guy came up with a story but he couldn't be bothered to write the screenplay? 
the truth is that guy, whether it was Lucian or someone else, he had written a screenplay, but they, it didn't, it was a gr based on the great original idea, but it didn't work that well, and it has to be rewritten. But the story writer, the guy who'd written the original, if 40%, at least 40% of the original is in the final version, he gets a big credit. Mm -hmm. I think actually he gets co co screenplay credit with the yes. new with the guy who's actually done the screenplay that got filmed. What is a synopsis? How would you define a synopsis these days? Well, a synopsis could be any length. It could be uh, basically a log line uh, would be a synopsis, which is something that every every writer should learn. Uh, you have to have a really strong log line to sell your idea. If you're in Hollywood, you've only got five minutes of a meeting to sell your idea, and it's got to be a really strong log line. And basically, mm -hmm. a log line consists of something like this. It's a, you've got a compelling character who has a problem. He wants to do something. But, and this is important, you have to have a but. Something is stopping him doing. That stopping must be so strong that it will either destroy his life or kill him. And the last bit is how he or she manages to win through. If you can tell a story in 25 words or less that has those elements, has the but in it, your character want, wants to do this, but something stopping, this is, and this is how they do it, you can get somebody interested mm -hmm. enough in doing it. A man owns a zoo and has learned how to clone dinosaurs, but the dinosaurs escape. <laughs> you know, how does your character survive? I mean, that's the plot of Jurassic Park, basically, and it's so yes. simple in that. You know, it's a kind of what if. What if you were able to clone dinosaurs, you know, from fossilized remnants?